Hello, welcome back to another Impact Review at the Impact Lounge. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. How are you doing, Ro? Good, Adam. Yourself? Yeah, really, really good. And uh, just want to thank uh, all of our listeners this week who have been uh, tuning in. We had a record number of comments on, on the review this week, so please do keep those coming. And uh, a little bit of a, a spoiler alert for you, not really, not nothing to do with the show, but we have got an interview with Eli Drake coming up this week. Now, you might uh, have already heard it by the time you hear this review, because we record this on a Sunday, and uh, we get, uh, we're doing the interview with Eli on Monday. So depending on when BQ loads all these things up, you should be able to hear the Eli Drake very short, uh, the Eli Drake interview very shortly. But going back to the comments, honestly, it's great to see so many people dropping us a, a message there. Keep doing that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like us on Podbean, uh, get in touch any way you want. But uh, I, I think Rose going to dive into one or two of the comments in a moment before we start the impact review. But uh, yeah, it really kind of uh, validates what we do here, and we love seeing your comments. So keep it up, Ro. Yeah, I think you had a few comments you wanted to to highlight. Yeah, the biggest one I'll say is um, a lot of people were talking about, and I apologize not knowing by name. That's something I'll make sure to be better about. But they were talking about Johnny Impact possibly becoming Hill, feeling like he'll reach his full potential. And I just kind of entertained the idea maybe you pair him with Tyrus. And I mean, I know Tyrus has been used as you know bodyguard with various wrestlers on the roster. But uh, maybe, you know, we'll it will really get to see what impact can do under a hill because I guess, and I know you mentioned this too, Adam, him as a face is just something that, you know, for some, it's not really clicking. Yeah, uh, it was, it was actually average boy. So uh, shout out to average boy for, for dropping us that comment about Johnny turning heel. I think there was a few others who did as well, but yeah, uh, I, I think that Johnny impact just needs a change. You know, it's not, he's not working as a face that there was a few times in this match today, which I'm sure we'll get onto when, when we talk about it, but he, he had a bit of a smirk and a bit of arrogance about him, which is something that could work for him. And I think that's the way that they would, they should, if eventually they do, is turn him heel is an arrogant type of character, a bit like the Miz in, in WWE, maybe something along those lines but i'm sure we'll, we'll see that but yeah keep dropping us those likes make sure you subscribe this is the first time that you're, you're tuning in and uh yeah um have we got any shout outs to, uh, to any other shows this week bro um just the usual just shout outs to the wrestling personified podcast um they do an incredible job covering the impact product as well so be sure to check them out and then the impact fan zone on facebook if you're not subscribe to it subscribe to the page you know a lot of impact fans talking all things impact wrestling uh, and one final one for me if uh, you'd like impact we also like other things uh some ex-colleagues of mine also run one called the the broken but glorious podcast which is uh, obviously uh, a play on bobby Roode's new character over in wwe but they they review all kinds of things over there and have interviews with uh, some lesser known stars as well so make sure you check them out all right well let's dive into the show this week uh what did you make of it first of all as an overall show you know, I thought it was good. I mean, if I was compared to last week, I, mean, I found last week's better. But that doesn't mean that I thought the show was bad. I thought it was good. And I think as fans, the one thing we have to do with our expectations with these shows is remember there's tape so far in advance. So not every show is going to be, you know, A++. You're going to have some that are, you know, solid, decent. And I feel like this one was solid, pretty good. Yeah, it does annoy me when uh, you get fans coming on and saying, oh, I can't believe we're watching, you know, stars who we know have already left and they're still on the TV show and makes it makes impact look rubbish. I, I don't think so at all. You know, and a perfect example, um, you know, is some of the stars on this show. They look more interested. Some of the guys that we may or may not be going. I, I don't want to do any spoilers. I know most of you, our listeners will most probably know who we're talking about, but uh, they've looked better than they have in months <laughs> on the recent tapings, even though we know that they're going. So, yeah, um, for me, you're quite right taping so much in advance does have its limitations but you know not every week can be brilliant and, and if we ever come over as negative on a certain point or anything like that you know ultimately you know no show is perfect every time and you know we're just trying to call it as we see but overall it was an okay show wasn't it it wasn't too bad yeah like it was solid man i, I liked it like biggest thing i've been stressing in is one thing I've been happy about with the product is the continuity. Like everything seems like it's following, leading up to something. We're not seeing something start one week and break off and it's totally different the next. 
Okay, let's dive into it. And, and I think you've made a very valid point. And I was going to pick that up during some of the segments on the show that uh, they seem to progress every storyline, even if there wasn't someone, you know, someone like Laura Van Ness in the show, they still talked about her and some of the progression. So they kept it going. And that's what has been lacking in the past. So it's good to see that the creative team are thinking about those kind of things of keeping us, uh, you know, ticking along, even if they can't get the airtime for them every single week. So let's dive into it. Uh, it was a pretty match heavy show this week um which i know before we know we've complained about the fact that there's been segment after segment backstage you know sometimes four or five in a row this week it felt the other extreme and that there was quite a lot of matches but we kicked off with uh lax versus cult of lee i don't know whether to call them the cult of lee or cult of lee because i know it is cult of lee but it always seems strange not having the word the there anyway uh yeah they came out and as you know i I, I love these two. I think that they're, they're excellent. And uh, they they really actually, even though they're smaller wrestlers, they don't seem it when they're tagging, if that makes sense to you at all, bro. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So what did you think of the match anyway? I, I liked it. Um, and the thing that what I liked the most is the implications of them getting a title shot now because, you know, far often in Impact, we see challengers and next week they get you know a title shot and you wonder well what did they did do to receive one and you know i was surprised because i i honestly thought lax was gonna run through them but i'm glad cold of league got offense in and won you know various cheap tactics to win but yeah i liked it it's funny you're quite right you know that if they would have lost this match, even though they cheated, you know, at the end, if they'd have lost this match, it would have killed all of their momentum. They would have just been seen as a joke straight away. And to some extent, that was part of the problem I had with OVE losing to Eddie Edwards and um, Lashley later on in the show, that these are the guys that held the tag championships for quite some time. And they've beaten, been beaten by two singles wrestlers thrown together. So uh, that kind of annoyed me. But it was good to see that with the cult of lead, they haven't done that. Now, with regards to the match, um, one thing that maybe I, I don't really talk about that much within LAX is that I think Santana and Ortiz are amazing wrestlers. They really are good and they're good characters. I actually prefer this version of LAX to the old Hernandez homicide one and, they, uh, and the like. I, I think these two are the real deal. They're brilliant wrestlers and i can see both of them if they want to if they develop a bit more personality i know santana maybe has a bit more personality than ortiz at the moment but i think these guys could really go single wrestlers later on down the line as well yeah i, I see that more with uh santana i could see that where they they could i could see them making something with him and i think this iteration of lax because you think about when it you know the original where you had uh homicide and hernandez then you know throughout the years they kept you know, integrating different parts. I think this was the, the one where they actually hit. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to Santana, you know, um, that guy, I think he has money all written all over him, you know, because he's got a certain look, which, let's face it, I think some of the female fans are going to like. Well, some male fans might like it as well. I don't know. Uh, but you can imagine him later on down the line, you know, if he gets a slightly different gimmick, you know, he could be like a... I don't want to say another MVP. Maybe that's I always try and pigeonhole these new guys into old time gimmicks. But you can you can most probably see him in sharp suits coming out and having that kind of you know gimmick around him because you know he's got the chops. He's good on the mic. He's a fantastic wrestler, and I think that ultimately these guys, both of them, will, will do something good. You know, they always spit up. Tag teams always spit up at some point, and uh, I think there'll be mileage eventually with these two uh, because. They, they are excellent. And cultively, as I said, what, what can I keep going on about? I just love the way I love the way Conley keeps trying to do the LAX symbol with his fingers and getting it wrong. Uh, it, it cracks me up every time. It cracks me up every time. But yeah, so once again, commentary. I thought they played this very well. I thought that they um, really sold the fact that, as you said, the implications of it is that it's going to lead to a title shot. And uh, there, there was one commenter last week on YouTube who, who said that, I don't know why we keep going on about the commentary team. You know, it's not important. And as I said, leave the comments. Everyone can have an opinion. But in that case, that guy was wrong. <laughs> commentary teams have everything to do with, with the product and getting a good one is, is absolutely paramount. And once again, I quite enjoyed the two of them this week. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're no JR or Don West or anything like that, but, that they're better than what we had with Borash, I would say. You know, for I think for me, <clears throat> excuse me, my opinion of it is 
I think when you have a show that's not as match heavy, you have like uh, more segments and like say you have a few matches. I think that's when sometimes the commentary plays a role just for me, because it's like, you know, we're only getting a few matches and, you know, the commentary is really not, you know, calling the matches. They're, you know, too worried about feuding with each other, you know, seven back from the early uh, Borash and Matthews feud. But I think when you have match heavy shows, just me as a viewer, the commentary doesn't matter as much to me. Like, you know, there's yeah. some elements, but it doesn't matter as much because we're getting so many matches where I don't care what they're saying. I'm just focused on what's going on in the ring. I, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But uh, I, I think that you have to get that right combination of of color and play by play and and, uh, you know, chemistry between the two guys. Just like uh, you and I on this show, you know, if, if we didn't get on with each other and we, we didn't, you know, have similar thoughts, this, this would be a train wreck of a podcast. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Well, it may be to some of our listeners, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's the same with the commentary team. You have to get the right mix. And, and I never felt like Borash and, and Josh were, was that right mix. And, uh, you know, they've had some terrible commentators over the years. But at the moment, it just feels OK. I think as Sanjay gets more into it and, you know, starts to hone his craft a little bit, I think I think he'll be very, very good. Uh, I still think Josh, you know, there's a longer term implication whether he's the right guy on there. But at the moment, it's working for me. All right. Um, we were went straight into the machines second match against hunter law brilliant name by the way um yeah so brian cage hunter law this didn't last very long the commentators were, were even taking bets saying uh, they thought it was going to go under a minute well what did you make of this one loved it i i actually on social media had posted i wouldn't mind if impact gave brian cage a goldberg-esque push i mean you don't have to go all full in like 170 or whatever in O. But matches like this, this will build him up. But with that said, somewhere down the road, and I'm sure they got it in the cards, if they were to go that route, they're going to have to have some guys that look like they stand a chance against them. Because you figure these past two guys, you know, these are really small guys where you're looking at it as a viewer. They have zero shot. But this, I, I like it. This is how you build a guy. You're building him as a machine. He should be able to run through guys. And maybe that's something, a gimmick that could be used where he has a time limit for his matches and he's able to beat guys in under two minutes. So I, I loved it, though. Yeah, it was really good. And it's just a shame that you're most probably not going to get this guy going up against Lashley because, you know, that, that would be a good heavyweight, someone who's not going to be physically intimidated by him. So, uh, but anyway, that that's for the future. But no, uh, and his finisher looks uh, absolutely brutal. Uh, so does the discus lariat, a move that I've never liked. But when he does it, it looks like it hurts. I, and I keep going on about this. You know, Johnny Impact, his moves don't look like they hurt. But but everything that this guy does, my word, I would like to be on the other end of it. So, um, yeah, then we went to Eddie Edwards with Lashley backstage. And uh, not really much going on here. It's just a, a bit of a nothing segment. Have you, have you got anything to add at all? You know, just a, a, a tad bit confusion, but I'll, I'll get more into it when we get towards the match. Okay. All right. We'll take a rain check on that one then. So, once again, as I said, you know, a very heavy match. Uh, sorry, heavy. Sorry, match heavy uh, show this week. We went straight into Destiny World Wrestling in Canada. And we were watching uh, Matt Sedell versus P.T. Williams. Uh, the return of P.T. Williams. So, um, yeah, you know, we get a lot of comments not just uh, on the review shows, but also, you know, on a lot of, of the other stuff that BQ posts on the channel, uh, talking about how it sometimes takes you out of uh, the actual feel of the show by going to some of these, you know, poorly lit arenas and these kind of things. What did you make of this? Do you think this, this match worked? And was there any problem for you being uh, at another venue? You know, is the I think the only problem I had, I and maybe it's something I didn't catch, but I thought this was going to be advertised as a match in the actual impact zone. So it was something I was looking forward to when I seen it was something that was taped. I think my expectations just dropped just a little bit. But um, as far as far as the match, it, it, it was fine. I kind of wish and this is where sometimes, especially when you're talking about they're having them at uh, different shows. I wish there was some kind of like segment that led up to. Hey, you know, maybe Peter Williams comes out. Hey, I want to challenge you for the grand championship at, you know, this location. I think it helps a little bit instead of it just coming off random, let alone it being a match that it, it, it comes off sometimes it being just a random match that was thrown on some card. 
and uh you know they decide to promote it on impact i think that they did this didn't they when um i think johnny impact said you guys are going down having a party down in detroit you know I, i'm a party kind of guy i'll see you there and it's very simple just to do a backstage segment as you say you know just to set it up it just seems that otherwise it's quite random doesn't it so you're quite right I, I think it would be a little easy tweak that they could make but it would really benefit the show overall um with regards to this and and the reason I wanted to get into the the look of the of the taping from Destiny, there wasn't a big problem with it. It was it was absolutely fine. Um, you know, it was a different quality, but that's because you're jumping between different cra- crowds as well. But I felt overall the whole show this week had some the camera work. I'm not enjoying it. I like the fixed camera, but there was a guy uh, at, at the side of the of the rig, you know, going around with the camera. It was very, very jittery and very sort of like lots of zooms in, zooms out. You couldn't really see what was going on with some of the action. And I found overall on the show this week that uh, the production of it wasn't as good for the in-ring stuff as it has been over the past few weeks. Anyway, back to this match. Um, Yeah, so, well, good back and forth. But uh, what did you make of it? You know, any surprise in there? Anything to add? Yeah, uh, I was surprised at how Seidel won because you know we're accustomed to seeing him win his matches with the shooting star press and to see him counter the canadian destroyer like he did with a move like that and then to win off of that i think that's what shocked me because i don't know if that's just a a, a counter move he used this time or maybe that's going to be an additional finisher that he uses moving forward but i was looking for the setup for the shooting star press but um i want to get your thoughts on the match before i uh, add another comment yeah, I think you're right. And by the way, I really like the finish of this match. You, you know, it was unusual. It was a bit quick and unexpected. Um, and it actually looked like a painful move that he counted with. It was just almost like he sat down on his head. Uh, but but yeah, it was good. You know, I'll, I'll just get, you know, post-match. Um, once again, the production seemed to let it down with the fact that the microphone wasn't particularly mic'd up very well for TV. Uh, I'm sure it would have been fine for the audience uh, in attendance, but uh, it, it seemed a bit odd on TV. But yeah, I, I can see that they're building his character. They're going with this this scroll that he's got. Um, and then, and they're setting up for a future match with Ishimori, which I like that they're doing. As, as we just said a second ago, you know, setting these things up, it's good that they've actually done that. So, you know, well done. Yeah, I, I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, and just to piggyback off of that, I think, I think that was just a comment I had. I liked to see him challenge for it, but I thought it would have been cool if he would have issued maybe a champion versus champion match just because, and not that this is a big deal, but, you know, he's challenging for the X Division title. You know, what What? What does uh, Ishimori benefit from defending the title against him when uh, Seidel's a champion himself? Wouldn't it, make, wouldn't it seem more impactful if if it was a champion versus champion? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, for some reason, I, I thought that that was it, what was going to happen. Uh, although it, did, it wasn't clear from, obviously, from the promo that you made. But you never know. We might find, uh, you know, the graphics that come out this week from Impact. We'll, we'll make it as a as a title versus title shot. But uh, you're quite right. The, the actual way that he delivered it sounded like uh, he was just going after the uh, X Division and not putting his own belt up. It'll be interesting that if he does win it, you know, because obviously we got the collector of belts in, um, Austin Aries, and then we'll if if Sadar wins it or Ishimori wins both, then uh, they're going to have two belts as well. It's going to be basically two guys holding all the belts. So, um, by the way, I think it's going to be a fantastic match because both Ishimori and uh, Matt are, are fantastic, and they've both been bringing their A game every time you see them in the ring. So I'm actually really looking forward to this match, and I think you know it's going to be one of those. It's going to be right up there. We talked about it last week that they had pay per view quality matches on the show. I think this will be another one that will be absolutely off the hook, as uh, the commentators like to say, off the chain. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Um, then we had Jimmy Jacobs with Congo Kong. Once again, just coming out saying he wants to see uh, Abyss, the real monster, to come out. And he wants him to meet his new monster, Konga Kong, which led into an in-ring segment. So um, <laughs> I like these things. I know it's silly. And, you know, Grandma Jenny looks like she's most probably the same age as Joseph Park with a wig on. But, um, yeah, it, what, what, what do you want to say about this? 
No, I, I liked it. I thought it was funny. Um, you know, the only thing in all of this, and I wonder, you know, where's Chandler Park in all this? Is he still, are they still playing off the injury from Congo Kong, you know, some weeks back? Or is he being dropped from the segment as a whole? I just, I kind of feel like outside of Congo Kong, this, this uh, angle, Chandler Park can get a big rub from this too. So I, I hope we haven't seen the last of him. Well, I know in his personal life, he's just had a baby. Uh, so maybe they were kind of giving him time off, you know, so they were building it that he could get injured and then giving him time off. I mean, I don't know where this is going to lead, but you would imagine it will be something like a monster's ball match at the pay-per-view or something along those lines. You would imagine um, something, you know, something along those lines, in which case, as is always the case with, abyss and monsters born all these type of big man big versus big man you usually have it spilling outside the arena lots of interference so i wouldn't be surprised if that's where Chandler park comes back into this story uh most probably with a, a cast over his neck and a neck brace in a comical fashion just like the guy from america's uh, top team used to have uh but yeah i would imagine Chandler will come back in at this point but yeah um you're right the, these two the only one who needs a rub off this is not Joseph Park or, or Abyss. You know, he's there to put other people over. So you can only imagine that that Chandler Park will be either involved at this pay-per-view or if not, Konga Kong will go through Abyss to lead up to a Chandler Park match at the next pay-per-view. That's the only way I can see this going. Right. OK, we had uh, Sadal once again. Uh, Seidel. I call him Sadal. Seidel. I have I said this last week. I have a mental block about this guy's name. Matt Seidel on the phone talking to his spiritual guide um, to let him know that he read the proclamation and that he's taken the X Division title. Nice little segment. N nothing else really to say, but it's good to see they're carrying on the storyline and they're not just doing in-ring stuff. Yeah, I, I think this is funny with it. Like, it's still, you could tell, like, he's still kind of in between like you know i see him still interacting with the fans but with this whole sp spiritual advisor uh, gimmick i like where they're what they're doing with him and with it ah, i'm sorry i like that they're doing this with him because it gives him something to do he does seem uh, pretty vacant you know in the personality departments before this started to happen uh you know this storyline so it is good that they're giving him something and it fits in as well because he's always had that kind of hippie vibe about him, hasn't he? That spaced out, uh, stoned vibe about uh, Matt Seidel. So it, it's, you know, it works perfectly. The the idea of having a spiritual guide uh, works really, really well. Right, okay, so on to Alberto El Patron versus Moose. And I'm gonna be honest here. I didn't see this match. And I watched Impact uh, over two se sessions uh, this week. I watched it up until the Matt Seidel bit. And, and I watched all of that and the, the Grandma Jenny. And I must have fallen asleep and, and stopped it whilst I was dozing. And when I turned it back on, I was at the OVE segment. So I forgot this match even happened. So I know nothing about it. So you're going to have to fill in on this one, Ro. Yeah. And before I do, the in, which was cool, was before this match, we got the GWN flashback of the week, which it was the debut of moose so that's two weeks in a row that we're getting these flashbacks where they're showing people that are currently on the roster you know whether they were a part of a big angle debuts etc so that's always cool um as far as the match i mean there's really nothing to really uh go into because it was a no dq a lot of the stuff happened outside i thought one uh, hilarious part was the trash can that el patron hit moose with it looked like it was made out of just straight rubber you know but <laughs> when moose got hit with it he just he sold it you know and um the ending sequence uh el patron hits the stomp to get the win i will say out of um all these shows you know when they record show uh matches from different venues this one the the uh production on this one was nicely done it you know in the lighting and everything so it, it was all right in this part but yeah just just a regular match. Nothing Nothing really stood out to me. I think that this came from Vegas, didn't it? It was in a casino or something like that. So you'd imagine that, that they, you know, that the production values were going to be better because, uh, you know, the, I think they had, they run regular shows there. So they're going to have the lighting from the casino and those kind of things. So I'm guessing that that would have helped. Uh, one thing I, sorry, I did forget to mention, by the way, while we're talking about Jimmy Jacobs earlier on, uh, I was on the teleconference this week with Jimmy Jacobs, got in a couple of questions that'll be going up over the next few days as well. So make sure you listen to that. For it's once, actually, he, not, not to cut you off, it's actually, 
has been uploaded. So check it out on the channel now. Uh, all right, there you go. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, by the time you hear this, it'll def it's definitely up. But he, he was excellent, um, and he was someone who wasn't in character. I know some some of our listeners always complain when when you talk to the characters, uh, you know, and and they don't break uh, kayfabe. In this case, he was quite honest about it and those kind of things. So, excellent interview. Not not because I, I was involved. It, it was a teleconference, but he was a really interesting guy. Make sure you check that out. Right. Okay. So then we had a recap of the rivalry between Rosemary and Anaya. I'm I'm surprised they're still playing this up as much and giving it as airtime, bearing in mind we know that Anaya has gone from the company. But uh, it, they didn't spend that much time on it. Um, Mackenzie Mitchell talks to Tyrus and EC3 in, I, I think, possibly the funniest segment of the night. Yeah, yeah, it was a. Uh, um, I mean, I don't, I don't really have too much to comment on. I'll go ahead and let you. No, no, I mean, I mean, you know, it was what it was. It wasn't that long, but, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, people who are potentially leaving and uh, those kind of things. And we've we've talked numerous, numerous times that EC3 looks bored, but he's actually looked quite alive again and having fun over these last couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, to me, it, it was good. And, you know, maybe this is him paying back, you know, before he leaves and, and those kind of things. And he's he's trying to have go out on a high. But I thought he did uh, quite well in this segment. It was it was nothing. It was just a bit of a talky bit. But at least it was humorous and it kept the show moving and it broke up uh, match after match. Right. Uh, OVE versus Lashley and Eddie Edwards. Now, I had a problem with this match overall because, as I said earlier on, I don't like when established tag teams get beaten by two individual wrestlers put together. That shouldn't happen, ever. Uh, if you're at the top of the tag team chain, you should be winning tag matches and you shouldn't be cheating and those kind of things. You should be winning them clean. Yeah, this is what confused me about this match because we seen it seemed like the feud was OVE versus Lashley. Then we see Eddie Edwards come out. So, <clears throat> excuse me, not... And when I'm saying OVE, we're saying... Uh, Sammy Callahan at first okay and we see Sammy Callahan face Lashley last week now if you would have told me this match would have been a six-man tag so say uh, Lashley and Edwards they add another guy I don't know who they would add but you know whomever or if it was Sammy Callahan versus Jake I mean along with Jake or Dave versus these guys fine I just didn't see the place for OVE to be facing the both of these guys because really the feud started with Lashley and, you know, as far as the match, I mean, OVE, they got their offense in, so they weren't look made to look like jokes. I guess you can just, you know, the downside is, you know, them losing because, like you are saying, they're an established tag team losing to a makeshift tag team. But then this sets up Callahan versus Edwards. So, you know, I'm, is the feud with Lashley over? Like, it just seem, seems like they're jumping around just a little bit. So that that was that's what kind of confused me with this whole match as a whole. The, the thing about the, the tag teams is that OV have just come off losing the tag belt, so they, they've got to have something to do. But this is not a way to make them look strong, is it? You know, they, they looked good in the match, but at the same time, you know, they should be winning this. Tag teams should be, you know, their brothers, they've they gone on about how they've gone all around the world, you know, they've been fighting everyone all their lives, and yet they come up against two guys who beat them clean you know and just I, I i kind of wish it would have been a dq or something like that you know to continue the feud but this was this is like a the exclamation point whether this is the full stop on the on, on the feud as far as ove of course concerned obviously you've got callahan all this does is once again is put ove in the shadow of sammy callahan because they've just used ove to get to callahan you know that they're the the bit players in this feud which is not where they should be at this point uh of their career with an impact but um with regards to the match i thought it was good I, I like jake he seems to have so much more charisma than dave jake's i think is the blonde one dave really has no personality at all does he um <laughs> uh, at least jake has a certain look and i'm so glad they got rid of their terrible terrible outfits that they had uh when they first debuted that kind of uh, purple lycra sleeve with hoodies. It was awful. They look so much better the way they dress now. And once again, it's, I, I'm all about presentation when it comes to wrestling. You know, the wrestling doesn't always matter that much. But um, for me, if someone looks odd, I, I can't get into the match. So anyway, but these two, uh, they're doing, doing very, very well. The match itself, it was quite good, to be fair to them. I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing it again, but it's just, uh, it was the wrong winners for me. It was absolutely the wrong winners. Sammy Callahan should have been more involved to continue that that feud. He should have been the one to help OVE win by by doing something to Lashley, and 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 it just didn't work out that way. 
Yeah, because especially when you're talking about leading into the next week's, and we'll get into the next week's matches, is, I'm sorry to keep coughing, but, you know, what what led to Eddie Edwards and Callahan facing one another, you know, when the feud started off with Lashley? So that that, that that's what I said. It was just a, a confusing, confusing uh, dynamic. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, you were saying earlier on, you know, it would have made sense to be a six-man team and bring in whoever to, to join them. But it almost feels like that's what how they got Eddie Edwards in this feud as well, was that, oh, we need a tag team. Let's get Eddie Edwards in. You know, it doesn't really matter why. Let's just get him in. He's doing nothing. So um, they did start talking about anything is possible, uh, which is funny enough, when, when me and my daughter met Eddie Edwards uh, at Slammiversary Weekends, he signed it, anything is possible. And I kept on saying to my daughter, what, what's the AIP? And she was the one who figured it out that's on his shorts. And they don't really ever play on that and I think that's really where they should be going with his gimmick is, is almost that you know he's doing insane things to win matches you know and overcoming the odds but at the moment he's just a very very bland mid-carder for me right um, then we had I thought a really fantastic segment uh, with Eli Drake I thought this was the best produced segment um, I, I thought everything about it just worked Eli Drake looked like a real star in this uh, and it was great yeah. Um, once again, if anything, it just made me, you know, validated that, you know, Eli's going to be all right and they're going to keep him, you know, in the main event. Yeah. One thing that was noticeable was that there was no mention of um, Adonis, Chris Adonis at all. Uh, so I, we, we know that he's leaving. I don't know if he gets involved, if that's him done now. Uh, but it would have been nice if they would have had some explanation for him leaving. Possibly that comes up, but there was no mention of him in this at all. It was all about Eli versus Austin, which is the way it should be, if that's the, what's going to happen going forward. But I still think that they, they need to address what's happened to Chris. Um, do you know, does he appear on any of the, the, the upcoming matches or is that him done now? Yeah, you know, I haven't heard anything, and I think that's why, too, maybe, you know, when you look back on, you know, why they took the belt off of Eli and then these promos, I think that was just kind of like their way of the new Eli. He's solo now. He doesn't have Adonis because, remember, that was one of the things that, you know, plagued his uh, early title run was, you know, having to rely on the Adonis interference. So now with the new Eli, you know, it's just all him. So, you know, but... It, it, it's it's unfortunate because you know what a route that they could have went was the whole him and Adonis tagging even just for, you know for a limited time I mean I think think that they'd be a nice addition to the, the tag team scene that we have currently at this moment but you know things happen so yeah so uh, this led us into the, the main event match and before we, we did this uh, they showed um, both EC3 and Johnny Impact warming up backstage before their match and some of these moves that Johnny Impact was doing just to warm up, I was looking at him thinking, bodies don't bend that way. If I was in a car wreck, I don't think my body could physically go in that, that shape that he was doing. But anyway, uh, he is somewhat flexible guy. Uh, the match, I thought, was, was, was excellent. I really thought it was a, a very, very good main event. Um, I've got a few issues with it, which I'm going to bring up in a second, but uh, I'll let you give your piece on it first. You know, with the match between uh, Impact and EC3, I thought it was excellent. But, you know, one thing I was thinking was, and, you know, this was something we had talked about earlier in the comments, you know, what about people talking about Johnny Impact going heel. A lot of his offense, it's so flashy of, uh, you know, flashy moves that a babyface would do. So you'd wonder if he were to go full heel. I mean, I guess he could get away with some of the moves, but to do all that flash in your heel, you, you know, usually you're trying to generate heat. And I don't think that would generate heat. But, yeah, this was great. Um, it's a shame that we're not going to get to see more of this down the road in Impact because, you know, we all know, you know, the future of one of the participants. But uh, they had great chemistry. And I believe, was this the first time they've ever faced before? I, I think it is, yeah. I, and I don't think either of them have faced Austin Aries either. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's it's a shame, as you say, that some of these matchups aren't going to happen. Just just going back to your, your uh, comments on... You know, are they? Can you have such a thing as face moves? Of course you can. But going back to how I think that impact could be packaged in that arrogant heel, he could still do some of those moves uh, and, and just do them. You know, with 
with an air of arrogance and sort of like smirking after he pulls them off. And I also think he can maybe even set them up, you know, to go things such as, um, you know, going up to the, the, the turnbuckle, you know, to, to deliver Starship Pain and then just, you know, shake his uh, finger at the crowd and go, no, not tonight, that kind of thing, to, to draw heat and say, I'm not going to do these flashy moves anymore. You know, you know, I, I don't I do not do it for you. So I, I think there's ways of getting around it. But, um, yeah, um, th- there was a couple of moves in here which I thought were excellent. And, and funny enough, my wife was watching it with me this, this afternoon when we, we saw the end there. And she said the same thing as well. It just looks like he's dancing, uh, which which it does at times. You know, the, the, the impact of them doesn't seem as good as some of them but i thought ec3 was uh was fantastic in this match the the only the two things i didn't like about it though was one they didn't protect ec3's finisher now we know that he's leaving so so maybe it, it doesn't need to be protected but certainly on tv shows or on impact as opposed to pay-per-views you shouldn't have people kicking out finishers you know that should never happen and, you know, if that's going to happen, then why can't Eli Drake kick out of uh, the Brain Buster by Austin Aries? You know, it's certainly because he hasn't been worn down. You know, he was 10 seconds into the match. So I think that if you hit your finisher, you should, shouldn't be kicking out unless it's a massive pay-per-view match where you bring everything. And, and, and I was disappointed that they didn't protect EC3. And it could be because he's leaving, but still, I, I just don't like the way they do that. They should have done it another way, like he put his foot on the rope or something like that. Yeah, you know what? I what I've noticed though with EC3, this is uh even I don't know if you remember and I I think he stopped doing it. But remember he had debuted the ECD, the EC3 driver where it was kind of a uh, I want to similar to say similar to what uh Fallen Angels used to do, the uh, the Angel Wings. And so we were seeing the one percenter, and another thing too with the one percenter, I've been noticing, and I know in this match I think he did a jumping um flatliner but sometimes you notice when he's hitting the the one percenter he's not even getting all of it and it looks like they're playing it off as oh he didn't get all of it so it seemed like he was doing away with that being his finish and he had a new finish i think that tko personally if you ask me the tko off the turnbuckle really that should have finished the match i mean that was just a a great move you know but obviously he got the got the two so I mean, I, I think it's just more of, I think he's probably going to have another finisher, you know, moving forward where he competes. So, but yeah, it looks like they had, they had been doing away with the one percenter being his uh, main finisher. Yeah, yeah, I agree, by the way, the, the off the top rope uh, TKO or TK3, I think he calls it, isn't he? Um, it was excellent. Uh, really, really good off the top rope. And, the, you know, that should have been the finish of the match, as you said, but it was just a, a random thing in the middle of it. The, the, the other part that, I didn't like was the finish. Um, I don't quite get why he got angry at, at Tyrus. It, it seemed to make no sense to me. <laughs> Tyrus did what he was supposed to, which was, you know, get the ref distracted so he could, you know, hit the finish or whatever. Um, and, but I don't understand why he went out and started having a go at Tyrus because Tyrus didn't do anything wrong. Um, and, and I know that's obviously you know, all part of the finish, but it just seemed out of place over something very innocuous. Uh, and, and it just, once again, seemed like a really cheap finish to me. Yeah, it. I guess what they were trying to play was since the ref was distracted with Tyrus, it made the ref uh, count slower than normal, which was awful. You know, I think when he went to count one, you know, I guess under EC3, you know, EC3's impression was... You know, had he been fully focused, I would have got that, you know, extra second and got the three. So, yeah, it, it, it just kind of lazy. But, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. But overall, I thought it was really good. And, and, and as I said, you know, I thought that EC3 looked better than he has done in, in months. And it's, it's a shame that, well, it's not a shame that he's going out on a high. It's a good thing that he's going out on a high. But the one thing I just want to reflect on EC3 just very quickly is that, He's never been the best wrestler. And I keep talking about Johnny Impact, his moves look weak and these kind of things. EC3 has never been the best wrestler. And I'm not now looking at, you know, at it because he's moving on to pastures new and these kind of things and, and starting to look back now. But it doesn't matter to me because it just goes to show that you don't have to be a good wrestler to get over. Eli Drake's another one, although he's had some good matches. He's not the best technical wrestler who's doing the high flying stuff but they've built characters they've got over the right way and to me that is way more important than actually being you know uh, a um 
a guy who can do, um, you know, a thousand and one holds. I can't think of the guy's name now. Dean Malenko, you know, you don't need to be Dean Malenko in the ring or or Lance Storm. You know, you just need to be someone who buys into their character and delivers it in a way that the crowd love. And that's why Eli Drake and, and certainly now EC3 is leaving is going to be a huge loss. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But uh, yeah, so after the match, um, we had Austin Aries come down with his banana in hand and his title on the other shoulder uh, and a bit of, uh, of a face off. Um, are you looking forward to the match? Very, um, you know, this, and then I think we're going to get this in a couple weeks at crossroads, but uh, I think, you know, next week's episode in, you know, the week leading up to it, I think the build up for this is going to be great. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, so you said you were going to give us a quick rundown of, of next week matches. What have we got? Yeah. Um, First, we're going to get the LVN commitment ceremony. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what that's entirely about. I'm sure it has something to do with the Nagals Championship, but that should be interesting to say the least. And then also we're going to get um, an answer from Ishimori, which is great. I, I didn't know. I, I thought for for a moment the match, the X Division Championship match was going to be something that we we're going to get next week. Uh, episode but it looks like we're gonna get to see Ishimori's answer first so maybe he might say hey put the grand championship on the line so that's cool then we're gonna get uh Joseph Park versus Congo Kong and um that's it I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be other surprises so gotta look forward to looking in to next week yeah, I think they're going to start building up uh, Feast of Fire, so we know that's coming back in the coming weeks as well. So I'm guessing that might get uh, so, some uh, time as well, so the lead up to that. But no, um, what they're doing now at Impact is what we've all been crying out for for quite some time, which is putting on consistently good shows, although this wasn't a great one like last week's. Consistently good shows with uh, everything making sense and storylines being continued. And I don't think there's anything on tonight's show uh, that you could really fault, you know, because every storyline that we've got going on at the moment was continued in some fashion. And even things like, as we said, Laura Van Ness got a mention on the show. Uh, but historically, we haven't seen that. The only one who didn't, I suppose you could say, is Ishimori. But he was still kind of involved because of uh, Seidel. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the, I think the, the thing that we just have to look at, too, is and give, and give Impact credit and the creative credit. Like, for them having you know, to do these tapings so far in advance, you got to imagine the fatigue, you know, for not only the writers, but the wrestlers and even the crowd. So I think sometimes the crowd might come across as on TV, at least, you know, not engaged. It's like these guys, this might be the third night of tapings. So it's just things like that. I think we got to, you know, take the good and roll with it. Like we're getting the continuity that we've, you know, a lot of us have been clamoring for. So that's always good. So when watching these shows, even if, like, like I said, this previous show, while it was in my eyes good, I mean, it wasn't you know spectacular. That doesn't mean it's bad. We're seeing though that they're doing little things like the uh, um, you know commitment to storylines and giving us more wrestling. You know, it's things of that nature. That's stuff that we wanted, and I think the route that they're going, they're gonna get the company's gonna get back to you know where they want to go. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, um, you know, looking forward to next week's show. If, if this show did one thing, it's made me look forward to next week's show uh, even more because I think this was like a, a coming soon feature, wasn't it? You know, uh, this is a build up for, to the things coming on down the line, which is what the weekly TV should always be about, shouldn't it? It should always be building to the next one. It's like watching a soap opera. You know, if it's on two, three times a week, you always know the third episode is going to leave you with a cliffhanger to once you're coming back next week. And that's what Impact, you know, and certainly over on WWE, you know, Raw and SmackDown should be doing. They should be building it up to, to the payoff of the pay-per-view. So Impact at the moment has been very, very good and very, very consistent. And I just hope they continue with this. It's going to be very, very good going forward. Uh, hopefully they're going to get some viewers back. I know that the viewers, the viewership for this week's show was what was the lowest of this year, which is a real shame. Um, I, I, I always feel that really you shouldn't look at the viewership of, of the week that you're talking about in question because quite often if you have a good show then that should be reflected in next week's viewership and people hearing about it and wanted to come and watch it um so i don't know what that means for next week because uh, i thought last week was fantastic um but yeah um let, let's hear some of your thoughts um i'm going to leave you with a, a question um we're trying to do this now every week leaving you with a question to to put in the comments as well but you know during the show 
Ro and I always go on about we think this guy's the best thing about Impact or this girl is or whatever. Just let us know who, who your favourite wrestler is in, in Impact at the moment. You know, my favourite segment every week at the moment is Cult of Lee. Uh, Ro, have you got a, a favourite performer at the moment or act? Um, I'm liking what they're doing with Brian Cage this far. I mean, it's <laughs> just to see a guy just go up in there and just tear through somebody. It's, uh, it's incredible to me. Yeah. So on that note, let us know what you think in the comments below. A anything that about the show that we talked about, or if you like, just let us know what your favorite part of Impact each week is at the moment. What is the bit that you look forward to? Uh, but that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you hit subscribe if this is the first time you come by. And uh, it's a uh, good night for me. All right, you guys, everybody take care.